How's it going everyone? We've got a massive Helldivers 2 update as the latest war bond has been detailed for the game. Yes, this is after the base war bond and the Steeled Veterans war bond that did come with the Super Citizen Edition. This will be an all new war bond and a pretty quick turnaround all things considered as it will be launching March the 14th. We have a first look at new weapons, armor, and much more that will be coming to the game. Cutting Edge war bond features lightning spitting guns, experimental armors, and new emotes is coming from Catherine Baskin, social media and community manager over at Arrowhead Game Studios. The blog post notes, greetings fearless heroes of galactic democracy. Steal yourself for the next big push against the disgraceful enemies of freedom with our new war bond that is cutting edge yes it's not just a cutting edge war bond the war bond itself is called cutting edge packed with high voltage vibes cutting edge gives you the chance to enhance your loadout of liberty with ultra futuristic armors guns that spit lightning super stylish capes and epic emotes as well you've got the super earth r&d experiments hell divers we need your help the brainiacs in super earth research and development have some cool experimental armor ready to be field tested this is where you come in you're just the right people for the job. You have the EX series prototype, the EX03 prototype 3 includes a rubber underlayer for insulation, handy really as this prototype wires operate at shocking 400,000 volts. You have the EX16 prototype 16, warning electric arc generates a strong magnetic field, avoid use while uh, near staple paperwork, and then you have the EX00 prototype X, the end result of several billion super credits and 12 years of research into creating the soldier of tomorrow, show us it was worth it. Expanded arsenal as well. R&D didn't stop at armor though. They're also rolling out a new series of alien splitting weapons with electrifying perks. You have the LAS-16 Sickle, a sweet laser rifle that fires in short bursts and it doesn't need reloading. Just watch for overheating or shove a new heat sink in there. SG-8P Punisher Plasma. Exploding plasma rounds sound deadly because they are to aliens and allies. This modified Punisher shotgun is as fun as it is fearsome. You've got the ARC-12 Blitzer. Project an arc of close range lightning or charge it up to fire off powerful bolts. Good for taking out multiple targets and giving you time to pick up a celebration emote. And you can unlock a new stun grenade, the G-20 stun and the LAS-7 dagger pistol on top of that. I know what I'll be doing, equipping the LAS-7 dagger and LAS-16 sickle at the same time, turning my Helldiver into a real live wire and melting the foes of managed democracy on site. But we've got to do this with a touch of style, right? Get creative and accessorize your armor sets with three new capes featuring matching colors and designs. My favorite is the bot slayer, a light tan cape that can no doubt look great soaked in automaton oil. There are even matching player cards for each cape as well as three new emotes. Cutting Edge is rolling out to your Destroyer's Acquisitions panel. March 14, soldiers get ready to spill some oil in style. Prepare for deployment. PSN account required content shown requires base game paid purchase of super credits and game progression to unlock. So obviously this will cost super credits, which is the in-game currency. You can buy those super credits, but you can also get the super credits by playing the game. And most people that I've talked to end up just spending money. Now this is anecdotal to the people that I talk to in my personal personal life like my real life friends uh every single one of them that is not hyperbole every single one of them has ended up now spending money on the game it is quite shocking to me because i feel like the game is pretty uh selective in where it requires money and the fact that it doesn't require you to spend money whatsoever but all of my friends have really enjoyed the game to the point and i think this is the effective route to go instead of trying to shoehorn in absolute necessity in buying content you make a compelling experience where people enjoy it so much that they're like, you know what, 10, 20 bucks for some super credits? Yeah, I'll spend the 10, 20 dollars. And then they're happily spending it instead of feeling like they're pressured into spending it, which I don't feel like Helldivers 2 at any point makes the player or the consumer pressured into spending money on the game. I think that'll ultimately be effective for the game. And I think ultimately with so many publishers and developers trying to go the live service model, maybe it's something to learn from Helldivers 2 when it comes to super credits and how they monetize the game. I know, you know, if you're talking to a Warner Brothers and David Zasloff is just licking his chops at the idea of monetizing a Suicide Squad about monetizing a Hogwarts Legacy 2. Yes, I'm pushing the cart before the horse when I say monetizing a Hogwarts Legacy 2, but let's be real. We know that Warner Brothers is going to end up doing that. I know that man is like, oh my goodness, how can we get those 22 million people that bought Hogwarts Legacy? How can we get them to spend $70 on Hogwarts Legacy 2? But how can we get another $100 out of them after the initial six months? That's what that man is thinking right now. I assure you that's what that man is thinking. I assure you that is not what Arrowhead Game Studios was thinking when creating Helldivers 2. Rather, they were trying to keep the essence of Arrowhead Game Studios intact, and I feel like they've 
realize that to perfection with Helldivers 2 while also offering incentive and offering monetization aspects to the game that guess what? They're gonna ultimately make a ton of money on. They're gonna make way more money off Helldivers 2 than Warner Brothers is gonna make with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And that's with Helldivers not being this big licensed IP. I can go on a diatribe about Warner Brothers and I probably will over and over again in the coming weeks and months, especially with some of their statements coming out in live service games in totality. I know that thankfully we've got some publishers now pushing back from it. It looks like Sony is gonna go more so to its roots and hey, Helldivers 2 is a Sony published game and being a Sony published game, it has done very, very well. And it's one of those games where I don't think uh, Arrowhead as a studio, I don't think their essence has been altered whatsoever, but it is a little bit surprising that this war bond is dropping so quickly, March 14th, but that still gives you enough time where if you're playing the game regularly, uh, you should be able to get this war bond no problem and you should be able to go ahead and pick it up. And even if they do want to do monetized aspects fairly consistently, like obviously you can get the super credits playing the game, but you know, for those of you like all my friends have when it came to the war bond, they ended up buying the game or upgrading to the super citizen edition. Um, you know, every now and again for a battle pass or something like that, it's fine, but just don't have it impact the essence of the game. And I don't think this is impacting the essence of the game. And these new weapons uh, looking pretty dope. Obviously, they're going to be pretty chaotic and pretty hectic on the battlefield. And I think some griefing is going to occur with this. Some of this stuff had been rumored for quite a while. And we have been expecting a lot of uh, lightning themed weaponry. And it looks like we're really going to be getting that with the cutting edge war bond. So a lot of exciting stuff ahead. And this is the first piece of the new content that will be rolling out with Helldivers 2. Obviously, the initial portion of the game when we were talking about it, it was all about server issues. It was all about, you know, making sure the game was at a working state where uh, people could actually play the game. Well, since now that element of the game is at the rear view mirror, the game, from my experience, I still get comments about people bugging out and saying that the servers aren't working for them. I don't know about you guys, but my experience has been rather positive. Now we can look ahead towards actual content updates, and this is going to be the first major one in this cutting edge war bot, and it looks like there's going to be a lot to sink your teeth into as far as new weapons, armor, and this is just scratching the surface of in totality what's going to be available in this war bond. And best of all, you're not going to have to wait that long. This war bond is just a week away and there's going to be a lot to sink your teeth into. Hopefully we do get an idea of what's to come with that roadmap, and I'm sure the roadmap is going to be dropping any day now, maybe by the time you guys are watching this video. Given that they're unveiling the next war bond, it will be dropping, but we'll wait and see on that. That's going to do it for me. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Very excited for this first batch of new content for Helldivers 2 coming March 14th, just one week away from today. Again, that's going to do it for me. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.